This is a travel router. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I use it for and why you may also wanna consider getting one. Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Talk with Samir where I talk about anything and everything related to technology in my life. So in my last few videos, I've talked about what I've done to soup up my home network by upgrading my routers, switches, and access points. All the changes I've made has not only enhanced the performance and reliability of my home network, but it also gives me more control over the security and privacy of my online activities. That being said, all that goes out the door when I leave the house and connect my laptop or phone to a public Wi-Fi connection. Whether I'm at a coffee shop, airport, hotel, or basically anywhere outside of the house, I'm no longer in control of the network that my devices are connecting to. And that's where this thing comes in. This is a travel router made by GL iNet. Don't be fooled by its compact size because this thing is an absolute beast. They make several variations of this router and the one I have here is the one they refer to as the Slate Plus. The model number is GL-A1300. This one retails for $90, but when I bought mine, there was an Amazon coupon promo that brought it down to about $70. Now, this isn't the highest end one that they offer. They do have another one called the Slate AX, which supports Wi-Fi 6 and some other spec bumps. They also have a few lower spec models that cost less. In fact, they have one model that they call Opal, that costs under $40, which is an amazing price point. But in terms of feature set, they all have the same features. So although I'll be talking about this particular one, you can apply most of what I talk about to pretty much all the travel routers made by GL iNet. Looking at the device itself, on the back, you have three RJ45 ports, one for a WAN connection and two LAN ports. You can, however, change the WAN port to a third LAN port in the settings if you wanted to. You also have a USB 3.0 port that can be used for multiple purposes, which I'll talk about later in the video. Also in the back is a USB-C port for power. And it seems like any standard USB port can power this thing. You don't necessarily need a high-powered PD compatible port. On the sides, you have two flip-up antennas, which I assume helps with the Wi-Fi range if you flip them up. And once you flip them up on the left side, or the right side, depending on which way you're looking at it from, you have a couple more things. One is a reset button, and the other is a customizable toggle switch, which can be pretty useful once you configure it. And lastly, on the front of the router, you have an LED indicator light that can provide clues on the status of the router. Overall, from the outside, the device is quite compact and is definitely travel friendly. The footprint is about three quarters of the size of an iPhone. Along with the router itself, in the box, you get a slim ethernet cable and a 15 watt USB-C power adapter. Although I'm not really a fan of the power adapter they provide because you can't detach the cable from the wall plug, so it's not very compact to carry around. You'd think that a travel router would give you a more travel friendly power adapter. But I do like the fact that it uses USB-C to power itself rather than a proprietary plug. This gives me the flexibility to use my own power cable and adapter rather than taking the one they gave in the box. Now, let's talk about what this thing actually does and how it works, because it definitely does a lot. Like all routers, you access all the settings in this router using a web browser through a device connected to the router. And boy does it have a lot of settings to play around with. First of all, you can always use it as a bare bones router where you plug in an ethernet cable to the WAN port and just broadcast Wi-Fi from it to connect your devices. But when you're traveling, it's not always guaranteed that you'll have access to an ethernet port. A lot of hotels don't have ethernet ports in every room, and you definitely won't find ethernet ports at most airports and coffee shops. So one of the most unique thing this router does is that it has multiple ways of connecting to the internet. Like I said, you can always use an ethernet cable and plug into the WAN port, but you can also use it in a repeater mode where it connects to an existing Wi-Fi connection and uses that as the WAN connection. A third way you can connect this device to the internet is by tethering your cell phone to the router. You can plug in your phone using an USB cable to the router and get internet through your phone if your phone service plan includes hotspot data. I plugged in my iPhone to the USB port and it worked flawlessly. There's also a fourth way of connecting this router to the internet, and that's using a cellular modem. You can buy USB cell modems that connect to cell towers without a phone, and those also work with this router. I personally don't have one of those, so I haven't been able to try that out. One of the advantages of using a router like this to connect to public Wi-Fi like at a hotel is that you only have to connect one device rather than manually connecting each and every one of your devices. Instead, all of your devices can connect directly to this router and get internet that way. 
This is very helpful in many cases where hotels limit how many devices each person can connect to their Wi-Fi. Also in some hotels where they make you pay for Wi-Fi, they sometimes limit that connection to just one device. So having a router like this will allow you to connect multiple devices to the internet while paying for only one. Also not to mention, it saves you the hassle of going through each and every one of your devices and entering the Wi-Fi password for the hotel every time you go to a new hotel. That can get pretty annoying if you're traveling with multiple people. Using a router like this this ensures that all of your devices are connected within your own little network and it's only using the public Wi-Fi for accessing the internet. So all of your devices can talk to each other without any restrictions but also without exposing themselves to other devices connected to the same public Wi-Fi thanks to the built-in firewall on the router. This is very useful if you're ever traveling with a streaming device like a Chromecast or an Apple TV because it makes sure that only you can cast or airplay to your devices and no one else in the hotel can see those devices if they Try to cast something. So using a travel router like this goes a long way in protecting your privacy when it comes to land traffic. But any internet traffic is technically still exposed and that's where VPN comes in. This router has built-in support for VPN and it can be used in multiple ways. You can either use VPN to connect back to your home network if you have a VPN server at home or you could use a privacy VPN service like NordVPN or ExpressVPN. Me personally, I've set up this router with a VPN connection to my home. So I can be anywhere in the world, but use the VPN connection to connect to my home network and have all the traffic route through my home network. This achieves two things. One, I'm not exposing my internet traffic to the provider of the public Wi-Fi. And two, it allows me to access the devices that are at the house, like my files on my NAS and all the media on my Plex server. At my home, I have a WireGuard VPN server set up on my Unified Dream Machine SE. And since this travel router has WireGuard client functionality, I configured it to connect to my UDM SE to get access to my home network. And remember that toggle switch on the side of the router? Well, I customized it to toggle between connecting to VPN and disconnecting from VPN. So whenever I'm outside the house, I just connect this router to the internet using one of the methods I mentioned earlier. And I just flip this switch and I get connected to my home network. It's super convenient. I chose to use WireGuard VPN because of the higher speeds it supports, but this router also supports OpenVPN protocol. So you definitely have quite a bit of flexibility when it comes to that. Speaking of WireGuard versus OpenVPN, this particular model can support speeds of up to 190 megabits per second on WireGuard versus 28 megabits on OpenVPN. So there's definitely a huge speed advantage if you go with WireGuard VPN connection. And if you get the higher end Slate AX model, that one supports up to 550 megabits megabits with WireGuard and 120 megabits with OpenVPN. For me, 190 megabits with WireGuard is more than enough because more often than not, I'll likely be limited by the speeds of the public Wi-Fi before I reach the limits of the VPN tunnel. Of course, if I didn't have this router, I could always just connect each individual device to VPN separately, but that involves making sure that each device is configured with the correct VPN software and configuration. This router just makes things so much simpler. Not to mention, if you individually connected each device to VPN and you wanted those devices to talk to each other, it would go through the VPN tunnel for any communication. Whereas using a router like this, any local devices can communicate directly with each other. Much more efficient. The VPN feature of this router is definitely my personal favorite, but it doesn't just end there. Another cool thing this router has built in is a network-wide ad blocking feature using AdGuard Home. At the house, I use Pi-hole as my DNS server to act as a network-wide ad blocker. This reduces the number of ads I see when browsing the internet. AdGuard Home is basically the same thing made by another company, and it's built right into this travel router, which is awesome. The toggle switch on the side of the router can also be configured to toggle AdGuard on or off if you want. I personally have AdGuard on all the time, so my toggle switch is better used for VPN toggling. When you combine all the features I've talked about, it already is a powerhouse device to bring along with you while traveling, but it has more down its sleeve. That USB 3.0 port on the back of the router, aside from tethering your phone or connecting a cellular modem, you can also connect a hard drive or a thumb drive to it and treat it like a network attached storage. You can create Samba shares on it and access it from multiple devices. This is an amazing feature for someone like me who tend to take a lot of photos and videos while traveling. Backing up all the content at the end of the day is a major task. But now with this, I can just have a portable SSD connected to the router and back up 
from all the devices simultaneously rather than having to connect the SSD to each device at a time. Now both myself and my wife can back up our travel content for the day simultaneously without fighting over who gets access to the SSD first. Overall, when it comes to what this device was designed for, I think it's as flawless as it gets. But that doesn't mean that we can't wish for more. One specific thing I wish it had was a built-in battery. Prior to getting this device, I was using a RAV power travel router, and that one had a built-in battery, which can be useful in those situations where you don't exactly have access to a power outlet, but you need to get something done quickly. With this, it's not too big of a deal because I can always use a battery bank or a USB port from my laptop to power this thing, but it would have been a cool feature to have. That being said, I do understand that adding batteries on anything tend to add significant bulk and weight and they wanted to keep this thing as small and light as possible to keep it travel friendly. All in all, I'm very impressed by this device. For something this small and compact, it packs a lot of punch. In fact, I'd argue that it packs more features than a lot of routers designed for home use. If you often find yourself working from outside of your home, using a device like this can go a long way to improve the security and privacy of your online activities. There's several features that I didn't even cover in this video, like using this as a VPN server rather than a client, or setting up WAN failover and load balancing. There's just a lot that this tiny little thing has to offer, and I highly recommend it for anyone who is traveling or using public Wi-Fi at coffee shops, libraries, and airports. I will leave Amazon affiliate links for this one as well as few of the other models offered by GLINet in the description of this video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. As always, stay safe and I'll see you again on the next one.